In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. given me 
Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. 
the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again, My Father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man will be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one, arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand into his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who would take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how will the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber, with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day, I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God, and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and, answered, and addressed him, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us on our oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his garment, his robes, and said, He is blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, you too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man is with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of, one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man, and immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed 
and went off hang, and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money and said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field even today is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded them. Now Jesus stood before the governor who questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one of, do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message, Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why, what evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, and after he had had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered up the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there, and they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests and the, with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself, so he is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lemma Sabachthani, 
which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran in to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. a holy week like none other for us and it was a Passover like none other for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ it was said of the saints that when they would read the passion of the Lord that many of them would burst into tears and when I or you read or listen to the passion what is our response and I think the difference is one saint said the difference is between hearing the passion and living in it. St. Paul says, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the church. You see, the passion continues in the body of Christ. The passion continues in us, in the world. It lives on, the passion, in us today, and particularly now in the world, laboring under this virus. So let's go through the gospel today and see how the passion lives on in the body of Christ today as we look at each of the characters of the passion. Well, today is Palm Sunday, and we processed into the beautiful word of Hosanna, echoing the words that were cried out to our Lord, that we'll repeat in a few moments at the Sanctus. Hosanna to the Son of David. But those Hosannas will change into crucify him in just a matter of days. In our world in relative peace, 
changed in just a few days, our whole society has gone to its knees. You see, the secret of a Christian is that we were already on our knees, already dying to ourselves in this Lent. The secret for the Christian is to die before you die, to rise to life in life itself, who is Jesus. We've been doing this for Lent. In Latin, the word Lent is quadragesima, the season of Lent, the season of quadragesima. 40 means 40, 40 days. That's also where we get the word quarantine, 40 days of separation. The passion continues in the body of Christ. We come to Jesus, we come to Judas, rather. And in Judas' first character we read about here, he's very asymptomatic, isn't he? He's keeping in groups of 12, usually not more than that, and he has the money, and he asks innocent questions. He's very asymptomatic, but a, a virus is raging and replicating in his soul. Mortal sin is not felt, but its effects are felt and infecting the body of Christ, selling out our Lord, who comes to redeem us and buy us back, and to save us. We sell our Lord out too, by our sloth and by our impurity and our lack of prayer. We want to tell our Lord today, Lord, I'm going to be loyal to you. I'm going to be loyal to you, Jesus, by my prayer and my purity. I'm going to be loyal to you by my word and my work. I'm going to be loyal to you in service to my neighbor and my friend. I'm not going to abandon you anymore. I've already witnessed in our parish here the generosity of the people sharing food amongst themselves, donations to those that need it. A friend of mine is a doctor. And he's very concerned about priests going into anoints in hospitals where they already have to ration masks. And so he's trying to make it so that masks can be more available to priests that have to go into the hospitals. Lord, we want to be loyal to you. And this is how the passion continues in the body of Christ. We come to Peter. Peter is asleep. And he's distancing himself. He's like Mr. Social Distancing this time. Keeping himself from Jesus at a distance, and if we were to take his temperature, he would be hot to himself and very cool to Christ. He's wearing a mask to protect himself from any association with Jesus. They even ask him, aren't you associated with him? No. He puts up the mask and says no. He probably recalled to mind the words that our Lord had said that he would save his life, will lose it, and he who would Lose his life for my sake will find it. About three or four weeks ago, a doctor, a friend of mine on the south side of Atlanta, contracted the virus and had to go into quarantine, but nothing can keep him back. Now he's serving again in the hospitals. And a priest friend of mine, without a shadow of a doubt, went right to anoint somebody recently who perhaps had the virus and himself had to be in quarantine. But he came to the sick. He came to those who were suffering. He didn't, they didn't distance themselves in any way. The passion continues in the body of Christ. And then we come to our Lord, who is at prayer to the Father. Our brothers and sisters, the Holy Trinity is still supreme in heaven. The angels are arrayed in perfect order, and the stars are in their orbit in keeping the things in nature. The birds are making their nests, nests, and the bees are pollinating the flowers. We have faith intact, all the virtues, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Grace operates now as ever. And we make a spiritual communion today, which is a serious thing. Our Lord Himself says, But when thou shalt pray, enter into thy chamber. And having the door shut, pray to the Father in secret, and thy Father who seeth in secret will repay thee. Who can't do this in these days? Christ then is arrested, taken to Caiaphas. It says, from now on you will see me coming in the power of God. And then he's given the same place order from 
Pilate, and he's thrown into the Galicantu prison, the Cockcrow prison, and he's down in the well there and isolated. But holiness can't be hid for very long. Our Lord says, you put a light on a lampstand, not under a bushel. And he will say, I, when I am lifted up from the world, will draw all things to myself. We come then to Pilate, who asks the question, what is true? And if you're watching today, if you're participating, if you're praying, if you've been with our Lord in these days, we ask ourselves, why? Why, Lord? Why am I here? Why am I praying? Why am I hoping? Why am I loving? Why do I have faith? In the end, it's because it's true, and we believe it. And this truth is a person, I'm a way, the truth, and life. Truly, truth speaks the truth, or there is nothing true, says one priest. And Pilate seeks every way to avoid it, giving the absurd choice of Barabbas, his wife's dream. And finally, he washes his hands, not of germs, but of responsibility. Because to him, as to so many down the centuries, Jesus is not considered giving us essential services or obtaining the necessary food and medication we need. We come then to the crucifixion, which is a death not by blood loss, but by asphyxiation in the end. And how many of our brothers and sisters' lungs are being attacked at this time, too? Our Lord has then given a crown, a corona of thorns, a crown of thorns, and he receives the blows on the head as our brothers and sisters receive the droplets on their heads. He's stripped of clothes, and how many of our brothers and sisters wear now hospital gowns? The passion continues in the body of Christ. And then that terrible temptation to our Lord will be, save yourself, come down, and we will believe. Save yourself, come down, and we will believe. Our brothers and sisters, are we questioning God's power in these days? If we despair of not having sacraments, are we questioning God's power? In the end, the only sure way that we will know that we are following the way is if the seal is there, the seal of the cross. St. Paul says, What then shall we say to this? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also give us all things with him? All things with him. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? The passion continues in the body of Christ, in us. And this is a joy with the cross, Gaudium cum pace. I'll never forget on my ordination day, something between the Lord and myself, and I received a cross that I didn't expect, and well, it was a deep one. And but looking back, it was the Lord's seal that he was putting on the day, the day that I didn't expect to have that cross that was coming. But it there was firmly and without a doubt. And it was the most joyous day with the cross. And how many of our brothers and sisters, even from our parish, are now having to reschedule their weddings, the happiest day of their life they were looking for, now with the cross, with this seal. Those looking forward to baptism and confirmation, putting this on delay, and we're already in the church. Think of that cross for them, but it will be joy for them because it will be the seal that our Lord puts in there, His divine seal, of his approval, of his blessing. This is what happened to Simon Cyrene, who was pressed into the cross, whose family probably wound up becoming Christians. It was the happiest day of his life to meet the cross, to meet Jesus. And he would go home to tell his family about the Lord. And today, on the days to come, we will be telling the passion of our Lord, his resurrection to our families to our children. And then Joseph of Arimathea, the undertaker, he'll have to tell his family too in the domestic church and the parents here looking after the faith of their children, telling them about Jesus Christ's passion, his great love for them. The 
The passion continues in the body of Christ in Geelong again. Finally, the tomb is secured. Our tabernacle has been secured. And we make a spiritual communion today. This is a time for spiritual growth, interior life, not defeats, not retreats, purifying faith over the love, hungering for Christ. After the resurrection, the disciples huddled in homes, hoping, fighting off discouragement, worried, would Christ come for them? And he did, and we believe it because it's true. But the hour comes, said Christ to the Samaritan woman, and now is, whom the true adorers shall adore the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father also seeketh such to adore him. So with you and for you, I will live today in joy, belonging to God, whom no virus can deprive us. And soon the Son of God will triumph over the darkness of death, and this too shall pass. May our hearts be found faithful and full of that hope and love that gives supernatural weight to the disciple of Christ. In a holy week like none other, the passion continues in the body of Christ in Belongo, so that we will rise with him in the resurrection. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten from the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son's glory glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the solemnity of Easter approaches, dear friends, let our prayer to the Lord be all the more insistent that all of us and the whole multitude of the baptized, together with the entire world, may come to share more abundantly in this sacred mystery. That God may be pleased to increase faith and understanding in the catechumens who desire to be initiated by holy baptism into the coming in the coming Paschal solemnity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are praying for an end of the coronavirus, for the healing of those affected, for the repose of the souls who have died, and for, and for the protection of the entire world. Let us pray to the Lord. We are praying for the intentions of St. Luke, the evangelist, parish, for whom his mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. May all the souls of the faithful departed in the mercy of God rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, O Lord, in the prayers of your church, and turn with compassion to the hearts that bow before you, that those you make shares in the divine mystery may never be left without your assistance. Through Christ our Lord.
association with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice Christ made once for all, we may already feel the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord for our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to Take this, 
all of it and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious child and sent his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the child to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei, Mortem Tuguam, Annunciamus Domine, Et Tuguam Resurrectionem Confitebur, Domine Benedictus. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and for its ascension into heaven, Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. <clears throat> Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father of faith, the offering of your high priest on Pisadek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. <clears throat> In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Do us also, your servants, to those sinners. Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs. With John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, who you sanctify and fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the sufferer of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Oh, see, 
spiritual communion. I wish, my Lord, to receive you with the purity, humility, and devotion with which thy most holy mother receives you, with the spirit and the fervor of the saints. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, whom, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and to submit to the agony of the cross. He lives and reigns forever and ever. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth the masses in him. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be you and humbly pray, and do thou all grace to the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell of Satan, and all his spirits who prowl about the world, seek 